Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Prince Jimil Ventura, the spokesperson of Fashion Revolution Philippines. And welcome to Fashion Question Time, the Ukay Ukay Revolution. So we would like to remind our guests and viewers to kindly fill out the attendance form, which you can find the link in the comment section and the chat box. So Fashion Question Time, the Ukay Ukay Revolution. So basically, it is an open debate that brings together industry experts from across the country to talk about pressing issues of fashion and to encourage discourse that will pave the way for change. So what is fashion revolution? So this day, eight years ago, on April 24, 2013, the Rana Plaza building in Bangladesh collapsed. Over 1,100 people died and 2,500 were injured making it the fourth biggest industrial disaster in history. And that's actually when Fashion Revolution was born. Fashion Revolution is a global movement that runs all year round. We have created a worldwide platform which we can all use to ask questions, raise standards, and set an industry-wide example of what better looks like. The global fashion industry is opaque, exploitive, and environmentally damaging and desperately needs revolutionary change. Thus, Fashion Revolution wants to ignite a revolution to radically change the way our clothes are sourced, produced, and purchased. So our vision for the future is for a global fashion industry that conserves and restores the environment and values people over profit and growth. So with our mission and vision, uh, we want to foster greater public understanding of fashion's social and environmental costs, thereby promoting ethical consumerism and responsible buying to celebrate companies who are already on a journey in creating a sustainable future. We also want to recognize Filipino makers, producers, farmers, and artisans to encourage Filipino brands, retailers, distributors, and manufacturers to commit to transparency in their supply chains, human rights, and environmental sustainability, and to work and create a healthy dialogue across interdisciplinary organizations, companies, policymakers, institutions, press, and influencers. So Fashion Revolution is a truly people-powered movement working together in communities around the world to create positive and lasting change. Fashion Revolution is a registered nonprofit organization in the United Kingdom with another 14 registered country offices, including the Philippines, and voluntary teams dedicating their time and skills to further in 78 countries as well. So we really want to campaign for a clean, safe, fair, transparent, accountable, and a more sustainable fashion industry. And we do this through research, education, collaboration, mobilization, and advocacy. So part of our projects in Fashion Revolution is the annual Fashion Transparency Index, wherein we review around 250 of the biggest global fashion brands and retailers ranked according to how much they disclose about their social and environmental policies, practices, and impacts. Also part of our projects is the Fashion Open Studio that focuses on the emerging designers and establishing trailblazers and major players in the supply chain of the fashion industry. We also have a free online course and uh, other things that we uh, do in every country that are members of Fashion Revolution. So we, uh, we have over 500 global partnerships and over 300 NGOs, activist groups, and arts and cultural organizations, and 200 uh, plus with educational organizations. So this Fashion Revolution Week, it's time that we come together as a global community to create a better fashion industry. So it centers around the anniversary of the Rana Plaza factory collapse, which killed again thousands of people and injured thousands more. And so for our discussion for today, let's have some opening remarks from one of the country coordinator, coordinators of Fashion Revolution Philippines. Isabel Dobles has been in the fashion and sometimes film industry for about eight years, working freelance as a couturier, 
wardrobe stylist, buyer, and researcher, and namely for the Fashion Transparency Index. So as a volunteer for Fashion Revolution, her experiences in these fields, Isabel has now constantly pursues the best of both worlds when it comes to artistic aspirations and sustainable goals. So let's welcome to the virtual stage, Isabel Dobles. Thanks, Prince. Um, so, Ukay Ukay was once seen as uncool and anti-fashion. It isn't glamorous to go scrounging for secondhand clothes after all. Uh, however, that has dramatically changed. Perhaps influenced by bloggers that give Ukay Ukay their stamp of, of approval, more consumers are now willing to exert the extra effort to shop for secondhand clothes. But more than being a cultural trend, Ukay Ukay essentially opens up doors to those who haven't had access to clothes before. Plus, buying secondhand also closes the loop where sustainability is concerned. In light of the COVID situation, though, Ukay Ukay has taken a hit. Brick and mortar stores uh, aren't getting enough foot traffic anymore, leaving trade retailers, those who come from lower socioeconomic classes, struggling to find ways to fill in their pockets. To compound th their situation, they're now competing against online ukay ukay resellers who give consumers easy access to the secondhand clothes that they crave. Such matters make some uh, of us question what will happen to traditional ukay ukay stores and the people who rely on them for their livelihood. Can ukay ukay compete against anti uh, against fast fashion retailers? Could Ukay Ukay be the answer to sustainable fashion in the Philippines? In line with the Fashion Revolution Week theme, Rights, Relationships, Revolution, this year's Fashion Question Time is intertwined with our 2019 policy paper called The Impact of the Importation of Secondhand Clothing in the Philippines. It will tackle the Ukay Ukay scene and all its pros and cons from the illegality of the enterprise its gentrification through the boom of online resellers to the Philippines as a textile waste dump site of richer countries, we will be delving into how secondhand clothing is shaping our country today. Let's talk about rights. Uh, the importation of secondhand clothing is illegal due to RA4653. Despite this, the commercialized secondhand clothing industry managed to rake in a gross income of 1.2 million pesos daily by 2001. Aside from its profitability, their business has also given Filipinos access to shop different styles at an affordable price, thus democratizing fashion altogether. These clothes have been have even been beneficial in times of calamities and are often donated to the victims. On the other hand, in the eyes of economics and policy, this ukay ukay industry was born out of richer countries exporting their waste to a developing country, something that eager, thrift-savvy consumers may not be aware of. What about relationships? Uh, the rise of ukay ukay has changed the way people think about secondhand clothing. Due to an increased environmental awareness, consumer ha uh, consumers have learned to adopt the same eco-conscious mindset when it comes to their clothes. Compounded by the novelty of owning archival fashion pieces, uh, more people are shopping from ukay ukay or thrifted clothing with the belief that these would prevent more clothes from ending up in landfills. However, it can also be said that ukay ukay promotes overconsumption since these clothes are much more affordable than their fast fashion consumers, thus encouraging people to buy a lot. This can cause a massive international waste management problem. It's this tenuous relationship between clothes and the environment that secondhand clothing touches upon. Ukay Ukay is so popular that it has become a hot topic amongst fast fashion, oh, sorry, fashion fans in general uh, and influencers alike. However, it can be said that this popularity uh, comes at a cost. 
It can be argued that fashionable thrifting has possibly become gentrified since more people from upper economic classes are eating into secondhand clothing stocks, consequently robbing the opportunity for lower economic consumers to shop for quality goods. Ukay Ukay has impacted our country economically, social, culturally, and environmentally, with still much more to be questioned and explored. On a consumer level, it has opened people's minds to secondhand clothing and has made sustainable, sustainable fashion something more relatable to the masses. But given its boom, one cannot disregard uh, the fact that importation of secondhand clothing is still illegal, leaving us room to question how do we tackle this while keeping in mind all the stakeholders in the industry. Is ukay ukay really a sustainable option given the amount of clothes it sells? Are specialized thrift shops uh, gentrifying the ukay ukay industry and stealing from the poor? What are the facts on international waste management and the Philippine ukay ukay industry? Is ukay ukay bad or good? Where should we stand on this? It's time to talk about uh, these questions and spark discussions that will enable change. Welcome to Fashion Question Time, the Ukay Ukay Revolution. Thank you for solidifying the foundation of our discussion for this afternoon, Isabel. And so now it's time to introduce our four panelists and our moderator. So for our first panelist, uh, let's have Liuisito C. Abweg in, on the virtual stage. He is an assistant professor at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Economics as cum laude from UPLB as well and his Master of Arts in Economics from University of the Philippines, Diliman. He had worked in various research and training capacities in previous local and international research organizations. His research interests cover mathematical economics, economic statistics, economic history, and gender economics. He also has served as a copy editor for the National Book Development Board of the Philippines and published textbooks for basic economic education and research. In 2005, he authored The Economics of Secondhand Retail Trade, an analysis of the market for ukay ukay. Currently, he is also an associate editor of the Journal of Economics, Management, and Ag Agricultural Development, published by the College of Economics and Management, UPLB. He is also the subscription editor of Lead Edge, a journal published by the government Govern Metrics Management Consultancy Services. Again, let's have uh, Luisito Abeg in the virtual stage. And our second uh, panelist is William Barry H. Kamike. He is a program manager of Segunda Mana, the donations in kind social enterprise of Caritas Manila that funds the 5,000 marginalized college and vocation tech scholars nationwide. The said program collects both pre-loved items and non-moving inventories from different retail partners and is now operating 37 charity outlets in NCR, Calabarzon, and Western Visayas. Mr. Kamike is a licensed nurse by profession from University of San Agustin in Iloilo City, but went into full-scale retail operations since 1998 in different industries like toys, teenware, beauty cosmetics, souvenir, and specialty items, to name a few. He became a social entrepreneur in 2015 by managing the Segunda Mana program of Caritas Manila. And he was part of the 2017 pioneer batch of masters in entrepreneurship major in social enterprise development of Ateneo de Manila University Graduate School of Business under the mentorship of its chief guru, Dr. Eduardo Marato Jr. as a scholar. He is also an on-call trainer or lecturer of Bayan Academy for social entrepreneurship for their various social entrepreneurship program at the grassroots level. This year, together with two other classmates from AGSB, they put up a social enterprise to help the farmers bring their produce to the main market at a better place. Let's welcome to the virtual stage, William Kamike. And for our third panelist, we have Anna R. Lagon. She is the COO of BIO with a combined experience of more than 25 years in manufacturing and retail of women's fashion, 
she is determined to recreate into circular model the process of how fashion is made for a more sustainable future. She also represents the company as participant member of the UNGC or United Nations Global Compact, which strengthens BIO's commitment in taking active part to achieve the sustainable development goals set by the organization. And BIO has been in the forefront of sustainability in the mainstream fashion industry in the Philippines. With its journey to zero initiatives, it has been pioneering movements that lead to its transformation from a linear to a circular business model. Let's welcome to the virtual stage, Ms. Anna Lagon. And lastly, for our panelists, we have engineer Aloysius Mapalo. He is a civil engineer, currently the president of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, Baguio chapter, and his stint in the academy as a Dean of Student Affairs and Services and as, as an assistant vice president for corporate communications at the University of the Cordilleras gave him the experience and exposure in community and cultural activities and services in and for Baguio City and beyond. Shifting and transitioning to government and public service for two years ago, he is now the Supervising Tourism Operations Officer of the City of Baguio. He spearheaded the planning and the implementation of the Tourism Recovery Plan for Baguio City, jump-starting its tourism start, restart and economic recovery. Today, Engineer Mapalo will be representing Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalo, and aside from its beautiful scenery and its cool climate, the City of Pines is among the favorite destinations of our tourists also because of its ukay ukay or thief shops. And pre-pandemic, hundreds of tourists flock their night market searching meticulously second-hand items to their satisfaction. However, this ukay ukay business was similarly affected by the pandemic. Hence, as a mitigating measure, the city government opted to reopen the night market with conditions that health protocols must be strictly adhered. So let's also welcome to the virtual stage, Engineer Aloysius Mapalo. And lastly, for our moderator, we have Ray Padit, and he is a fashion designer on a mission to advance sustainable fashion in Singapore and beyond. But he's Filipino. In just three years, fashion's green warrior Ray founded Singapore's first ever retail space for swapping and upcycling apparel the fashion pulpit, and two nonprofits that advocate for a sustainable fashion, Connected Threads Asia and Swapaholic, from January 2017 until April 2008. So let's welcome to the virtual stage, Ray Padit. Ray, take it away. Hi, thank you so much, Prince. Hi, everyone. Magandang hapon. I'm really is excited to be part of this panel discussion because a secondhand or commonly known as ukai ukai is my favorite topic. And to start, we all know that as what Isabella mentioned that ukai ukai is really is the best word in the fashion industry now. And it is poised to surpass the growth of the fast fashion within the decade. So, but understanding that there's different challenges and opportunities that we have in different countries and of course this afternoon we will be focusing on the okay okay revolution in the philippines so without further ado i'll be digging in um, with the discussion and my first question will be directed to uh, miss lagon and engineer mapalo so as i have mentioned that the popularity of okay okay is really on the rise now in the context um, in the philippines is it a bad thing or a good thing for the local fashion industry as a whole? What do you think of this um, rise of ukay ukay? Who should start first? Um, maybe ladies first, Ms. Lagan. <laughs> okay, um, there are actually different market segments for fashion to serve, no? uh, you know, different needs. Um, especially for women, we have different requirements for clothing. But but um, it depends on the requirements of the particular market or the person being catered to. But you know, the affordability is the edge of the secondhand market, and it is a good alternative to prolong the use of clothing. So, as a mindful fashion maker and producer, I fully support this concept 
but I would like to advocate for this to happen within the local community instead of importing them. I think this will help in our sustainability efforts within our own country. Uh, with regards to the rise of upay upay, and you know it is affecting our brand. And I, I think um, I've answered that uh, um, particular point already because of the diversity of market, there is always room for everyone. Engineer Mapala, what's your take on this? Yeah, good afternoon and uh, thank you for inviting us. Um, yeah, the question uh, on uh, whether uh, it's a good or a bad thing uh, uh, really uh, will uh, bring forth a lot of debates, no? but definitely uh, we have a, you know, an under sub, a subculture here in Baguio City in terms of uh, looking at uh, the fashion industry. And um, there is no competition at all. I think uh, Mom Anna had uh, uh, manifested it correctly when there is a diverse mar market. Because uh, you have to put in context also what we meant by local brands. You know? Here in Baguio City, we advocate for uh, local, text local textiles, local weavings. And uh, you know, I, I am glad to know, as a matter of fact, that uh, Bayo at one point came over here in Baguio City to look for uh, local weavers as, um, as a source of uh, raw supply. And, and I think that's a good uh, initiative in terms of uh, uh, promoting a local uh, 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 you know, a local fashion uh, a supply chain you know, and, and bringing forth the economy, which is also what Ukay Ukay is doing. You know? uh, it's a big industry here in Baguio City. It helps a lot of uh, our entrepreneurs. Uh, and not only that, it is uh, affordable in a sense that it captures a certain uh, market segment, but it is actually bringing out uh, creativity in a lot of people here in Baguio City. We are uh, designated as a UNESCO creative city. And uh, uh, our, our artists and artisans are actually looking at uh, uh, ukay ukay or secondhand clothing as uh, something that they can work on and, and put forward as a, uh, uh, a, a new concept in terms of fashion designing, uh, where the upcycling uh, uh, concept has been introduced many times here in Baguio City. Uh, and and uh, to, to give an idea, it's really a good thing here in Baguio City because for several uh, fashion shows that we are producing here, there are two types that uh, we uh, have been, um, the two types of fashion show that we've been uh, producing. One is, uh, you know, okay, okay fashion show where upcycling is the main uh, idea there. Uh, creativity is being port brought out by our designers. And second is the use of local fabrics, local weaving, local handicrafts. So it goes both ways. When we say local brands, meaning it's our local fabrics, and uh, it has, to, it can also intertwine as a matter of fact. But if we're talking about brands that are not even made in the Philippines, then that's a different uh, discussion altogether. No? But uh, if, uh, if we're talking about the local brands that uh, are, uh, are really made and fabricated here in the Philippines, and even looking at our locally tradition, uh, traditionally locally uh, woven products, then that's even the better uh, perspective when we talk about um, uh, local fashion industry, particularly here in Baguio City. So there's no competition at all. Uh, it, it brings out a lot of creativity in, in our artists and designers here in Baguio City. Amazing. That's good to know that um, Ukay Ukay and the local fashion can coexist together. Um, so bringing the point of what Isabel has raised a while ago, and Ms. Lagon and Engineer Mapalo has emphasized that it can coexist, especially with um, the local fashion scene in, in, in the country. Do you think we need to have to import um, clothes from other countries for the Ukay Ukay scene in the Philippines to sustain itself, or we have more than enough supply that can roll over and make Ukay Ukay a sustainable um, scene? May I respond to that? Sure. Um, I think, you know, we have so much uh, problems on textile waste. A lot of uh, people, companies even, are approaching Bio to help them in their uh, management of waste, uh, you know, textile waste. 
because I think uh, word has uh, gone around that we have been really actively supporting the, uh, you know, the upcycling, recycling, and a lot of things. Bio has been really uh, coordinating with a lot of people on this. So um, given all those huge problems, even the donations that is being received by uh, the different um, calamity cost uh, places, we have a lot of ways to tackle here in our own um, place. So I don't think there is a need to import. Um, you know, I, the bad thing there is, for me personally, I really don't want to, to uh, make the Philippines, you know, a giant dump site of all the textile and unused clothing even of um, the countries around us, especially the, the first world countries we're in they have a lot of season and all they have to do is throw away their clothes, their clothes. And instead of um, managing their own waste, the easiest way for them is to just dump it outside, which is normally given to third world countries. So that's my take on that. Right. If I may just comment on that, <laughs> uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we cannot deny the fact that uh, the bulk of uh, the sources of our Ukay Ukay uh, entrepreneurs here are from abroad now. Uh, it's coming from outside of the Philippines. Uh, I think it's nice to, to know the, um, the take of uh, uh, Ms. Lagon about uh, tapping our local uh, uh, waste products. Uh, but uh, I, I, I have not seen that as, uh, as something that is um, pro propagating now. You know? Uh, yes, uh, when, when, when going back to your question, uh, whether uh, we should uh, legalize importation, I think um, we will just need to look at the per perspective of the economy and the purpose of, uh, of uh, the secondhand uh, clothing. No? And uh, as, as I've said, if it's going to support the creative industry, uh, therefore, we might need to look at some policy changes in terms of how uh, importation can be done uh, legally and at the same time uh, in, a, in a regulated manner. We, we, we don't necessarily have to be like a waste dump, uh, mm -hmm. just bringing here uh, all those products that cannot be used anymore, but uh, perhaps uh, just uh, regulating in a sense that uh, we just uh, 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 choose what can be imported, uh, and those are those and those are that could be uh, upcycled or recycled, uh, and that is as as I've said uh, could be uh, something that we can ask our uh, uh, designers or fashion specialists. Uh, uh, we can ask them. Uh, uh, we can ask from them uh, whether how to categorize those. Uh, types of uh, secondhand clothing, but uh, definitely that, uh, it 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 will be difficult if uh, def there will be no. Uh, uh, it's practically killing the okay okay industry here in Baguio City if you stop the importation. As a matter of fact, it's still illegal at this time, right. uh, and it's coming in uh, in in certain uh, innovative ways I, that I, uh, uh, I, I I I myself is not uh, fully aware of, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, the bulk of uh, the Ukay Ukay uh, sources are, are actually from abroad, you know, and uh, we have not tapped uh, local uh, uh, secondhand products yet. Right. So I'm bringing in Mr. Abuke in this discussion now because it's really getting interesting to know that secondhand is actually illegal where importing secondhand is illegal um, doing so in the Philippines. And to the point of Ms. Lagon that we do have enough supply to build a healthy ecosystem in the uh, Ukay Ukay in the Philippines. What's your take on this, Mr. Abuke, of like, um, engineer Mapalo is saying that it is healing the whole ecosystem of Ukay Ukay if we don't import in Baguio, whereas Ms. Um, Lagun is saying that we do have enough supply. Where do we find the balance of this? Um, good afternoon. So thank you for uh, the, the question. Um, well, the, the issue of importation is really a, a sensitive topic. Uh, in fact, um, when I remember that this, the discussion we had three years ago in the 
preparation of that paper by Fashion Revolution, there are already legislations that are in Congress to amend RA 4653. But the problem is there is no actual uh, update or it did not push through because of the um, priorities of the, the Congress. At the same time, we are now in this uh, longest lockdown. So the priorities of the government have shifted. So my, up, my take on that is, well, it is possible to balance out the importation, although it is true that Baguio has the bulk of the the, the second-hand clothing or ukay ukay is much on the the, the 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 importation side. But the upcycling uh, nature of clothing is actually even way back from the Spanish era. Uh, Filipinos are culturally known for being uh, innovative, especially in terms of clothing. In fact, a lot of our fashion designers are being hailed locally and abroad because of their different ideas in fashion, regardless of whether the materials are being used uh, prime or it is being used as uh, secondhand. So what I know is that um, there are the, the upcycling uh, methods are actually good in terms of sustainability, but the implementation side is always an issue. In fact, it's virtually an issue in everything in the Philippines <laughs> regarding policy. So you might have we might have the best set of rules, but the implementation is always a, another story. So that's the thing that um, I think that is one problem in in the second hand retail trade. Uh, and one thing more is that um, to tap the local suppliers is another issue. It is because um, when I did, actually, that's my undergraduate thesis that I did 20 years ago. Um, when I was doing that paper, um, much of the buying of secondhand clothing is anchored on the idea that um, it is always, so to speak, that it is better for uh, uh, the, 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 the clothing that are available, even if it is secondhand. It, the quality is even better than the locally produced uh, clothing. So that's the idea. The second thing is that the second consideration is um, uh, some, Philipp, some of the consumers are looking at the brand. So they would, even if it is secondhand, they would prefer that there is some brand on it. Uh, we know for a fact that a, a lot of uh, local consumers are are getting gaga or crazy in terms of brand. So that's one of the things that drive possibly the, the demand for so, uh, second-hand clothing in Baguio. But it is a good thing to note that, um, as Engineer Mapalas mentioned, there are, there are upcycling uh, efforts in the local industry in Baguio. And also even in some parts of the Philippines. In fact, I was informed that even universities that are offering courses on or programs on clothing technology are inducing this idea of upcycling, which is part of their curriculum. So it's a nice thing to know. And then, so that's all that I can say for that question. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I guess what I've been hearing here is the next step that we are doing actually with the Ukai Ukai is the upcycling, which we will be dealing in later. Um, but before that, to contextualize what Ukai Ukai really does in our economy. How big is Ukay Ukay market actually? This is to all the panelists. Yeah, uh, I have some statistics if I may share it. Uh, Great. Pre pandemic, uh, uh, our licensing and uh, uh, division here in Baguio City has uh, uh, accounted for a total of uh, uh, almost 250 million in, in gross receipts. That is uh, the average from prior to 2020, 250 million in gross receipts. Many of these are from tourists uh, who go to uh, uh, okay, okay stores or secondhand thrift shops uh, here in Baguio City. So that's how large it is here in Baguio City. So uh, that's per year. Huh? Uh, but of course we experienced a slump uh, during this pandemic, but uh, since we attempted to open already and many of our okay, okay stores ven ventured into online selling, uh, which are the same people anyway, uh, we, we, we still saw uh, in 2020 a gross receipts of 150 million. So that's a 100 million less of the previous uh, pandemic. So that's how large the 
industry here in Baltic City. Nice. Any other comments? Uh, May, may, I, may I ask in connection with that? So you mean um, the 250 million gross receipts are all from imported ikayukay? Uh, the bulk is, majority is uh, uh, really imported ikayukay. Ukay. Yeah, but uh, well, as I've said, since um, it's uh, technically illegal, uh, it's not coming in a second hand. <laughs> Uh, so I, I like what, how I mentioned it, uh, there was an innovative way of uh, how they do things uh, here. You know, that many of these goods are not coming in as second hand because that's illegal. Uh, they come in, in, as a matter of fact, in Balikbayan boxes. Uh, many of these are uh, in a, uh, fronted as donations, uh, but uh, were actually being sold. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that, that that's um, the main uh, supply chain no, uh, as of now. And uh, that has been going on since like 60s and 70s. So it's really a, uh, something that has been, uh, the, the structure has been there for, for the longest time. Uh, the only thing that is different now in the modern days is that, um, uh, as I've mentioned, no, there are now uh, uh, designers or enthusiasts who, uh, uh, bulk uh, buy, no buy in bulk so that they can upcycle or they can uh, uh, sort so that they can uh, have selections and and uh, uh, upgrade no uh, the the uh, uh, market of uh, of this okay before it was really scouring through uh, mountains of uh, secondhand clothing that's why it's called okay okay no you have to really dig dig uh, through and find your uh, uh, best Buy, but, but now uh, there are many in innovations. No? There are sortings, there are selections, and there are upcycling, uh, but I think it's the same uh, source. Great, cool. So I think we, have, we will agree that ukai ukai can be a result of the fashion waste of the excess um, production in the industry. Um, may not be in the Philippines, but in other countries that we became like a dump site per se. With the business of Ms. Lagon and Mr. Kamike, how are you doing in terms of solving this problem, the fashion waste? What are your goals and the initiatives that you guys are doing? Sir, go ahead. I've been talking. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, just to give you a brief background, uh, Sigundo Mana is just one of the many programs of Caritas Manila. And Caritas Manila is, uh, to, play, to put it in a simple term, the Catholic NGO that uh, handles by, uh, that, uh, under Archdiocese of Manila. So um, the program started in 2008. And uh, if you have to ask me, how was it? Uh, through the years, we are growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, simply because uh, our market positioning is basically we are a funder for the scholars. And we're talking of 5,000 scholars nationwide. And our biggest haul of scholars happened in uh, 2017 when uh, 700 graduates, all Yolanda survivors from Palo, from Leyte and Samar, uh, were able to finish the course. And uh, you cannot just imagine, you can just imagine like uh, the impact of this program that was really patterned after the likes of Goodwill Industries of US, the Oxfam of London, uh, the Roba Amiga of, uh, of uh, uh, Barcelona, Spain, uh, among others, uh, including our partner in South Korea, which is the Beautiful Store. So it's basically the same story wherein we collect all the nations, but through the years, we develop a, a new, a new um, idea wherein instead of focusing really on the second hand, there's far more tons of non-moving inventories from our partners. Um, just to give you an idea, this biggest mall operator in the Philippines, and you know you know very well who I mean. Uh, my goodness, you can just imagine the truck loads halos like every other month, if not every month, especially during this uh, pandemic. So we are already on that note. Uh, the, uh, the, the program in 2008 is, a, is grossing at 2 million. 
And in 2019, we are already at 72 million every year. So even during the pandemic last year, we still managed to, uh, to get the uh, substantial amount, not really at par with the previous years. So I think what makes us unique is the fact that uh, our suki, our customers, our frequent buyers fully understand that, yes, they get to have a very, uh, a very nicely priced item, but at the same time, they are helping uh, a lot of kids finish their education. Those Shulanda scholars, some of them are already, don't, they are alone. They're already the ones left after the, that, the, that biggest typhoon over the several years already. And um, in 2019, we just, uh, I, I was able to, uh, to witness the graduation of the first batch from Basilan. So who would ever think that uh, the Muslim students are being funded by a Catholic school? Of course, uh, nobody knows this in mainstream media. But, you know, the, the, the program really emphasizes its impact at the, uh, at the, uh, at the education level, because you know very well in the Philippines that uh, education is still the great equalizer in order to battle off poverty. And uh, from 2008 until uh, 2019, uh, this program able to uh, send scholars, and some of them are already big time earners, uh, about 3,000 all of them. So it continues to, we continue still continue to position on that note. We just have to add that, uh, because of pandemic, now we are doing some, the, the funds are also being sent or being used for the usual relief operations. Uh, continuously, we didn't stop uh, among the poorest of the poor, not only the poor, but the poorest of the poor. So actually, in, in my case, I totally agree with Miss Anna a while ago that um, there's still a lot in our own in our own backyard about this uh, about this uh, supposedly too much apparel that is uh, being produced. But I think uh, we just have to uh, remember that uh, if it will affect also the lives of the other part of the business, I mean, the disentrepreneurs, especially from, from Baguio, what we can do is, uh, the solution is, you've already mentioned it very well, it's still the repurposing of items or the upcycling for that matter. When I went to South Korea to visit our partner, I was really dumbfounded and I, I was like, oh my goodness, I, I think I'm 20 years behind, if not 10 years, because the government plays a very important role putting up an, uh, repurposing items, a, 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 a upcycling center and Every entrepreneurs that are into this should go into that one giant building and uh, you just have to be amazed how the entire thing is being done. And uh, I, can only, uh, I can only admire from a distance that, wow, it's, it's I think it will, we will go there. We will definitely reach there, but it will take quite some time. It will take quite some time. And uh, in my case, um, like right now, uh, just two weeks ago, I got a call already from the PUP that uh, they are incorporating my program into their uh, interior design students as part of their curriculum that uh, they have to go here. So we just have to, uh, to iron out all the health protocols on how to do it, that they have to go here and then they have to create something new about this, these items. It's not your usual the, the idea is not the usual T-shirt still being designed as a T-shirt, but really uh, making that item at 360 degrees turn. That is why the term is repurposing. Oh, let us see if uh, this will, if this will be in the long run, will be the next thing in the Philippines. Of course, I'm, I, I, I am not only the one doing it. There's a lot there who is the, who has the same program as mine although uh, on a different most probably in a different scale different purpose different market positioning and how they were able to relay that to their own loyal customers as well
So that, yeah, that, that, that's my take on this. Thank you. Okay, um, from my end, I just want to make it clear that I fully support the secondhand market. It's just that uh, when it's imported, I have to think twice it's because our company advocates for fashion sustainability, which can be done in various ways, including the extension of fashion's life cycle through processes such as you know, those mentioned earlier, upcycling, recycling, repurposing. So it, it, this applies to all types of fashion segments, whether it is secondhand or not. As long as you produce fashion, there is always waste. So waste aversion is a very important responsibility to achieve sustainability. And for us, that is precisely what we are doing. And although I can only speak for myself, um, that's why, that's why in, in bio, we are doing a lot of ways to eliminate the industrial waste that we are producing. First, in our creative process, designing out waste is a top priority. We have reduced our production waste from 35%, it is now down to 5%, and we are reducing it further. We are also supporting weaving communities, just like uh, in Baguio, and I still have uh, continuing engagements and collaborations there, um, all in support of sustainability for fashion. We want to impart also our milestones and share what we have learned so far so that a lot of people will really embrace sustainability as you know, a way of life. Um, we, we also will be teaching upcycling through weaving. Um, there's a lot of possible ways, you know, creative ways so that production offcuts can become a material instead of throwing it all um, in, the, in the landfills. So we have been actively transitioning from linear to circular model since uh, 2017. It's an ongoing journey in which uh, you know, we were able to achieve measurable milestones. In fact, if you go to our website in styleshops.com.ph, you can see that bio products are now carbon neutral. We hired an international agency to track and measure our carbon footprint. I think we are the first Philippine local brand to have these metrics. And we really believe that consumers play a vital role in the whole cycle of sustainability. So we share with them this you know, valuable data that can also help them know their environmental impact in every purchase they make from us. Eventually, our end goal is uh, to achieve zero carbon emission. It is a revolutionary ambition. And I'm just so happy that we have started this purposeful journey that we can be really proud of. So it's been going on for bio and um, you know, we launched our sustainability program and uh, it was really a bold step that started our sharing of actual practices for zero waste initiatives with our goal aligned with the UNGC's Race to Zero. It is the objective um, to really be zero uh, to, I mean, to be zero um, in terms of carbon emission. The target is 2050. It's a long way, but we have to really start now. So every time I mention um, secondhand, I'm really for it. So I just want to make it clear because it's a good process for sustainability. It's just that we can, you know, consider um, what we have here, make use of the things we have here and maximize its potential. Since there are a lot of creative people in the Philippines, we might as well, you know, um, make use of them. But localism is something that I really want to, to push for. There is value in in the culture that we have. And I've seen that in Baguio, you know, there's a lot of creative people there. In fact, I've been there eight times this year. I'm loving it so much that, you know, I wanna have some contribution in your city. So maybe, you know, there's an ongoing um, projects by the mayor and maybe we can talk about local supply chain for the secondhand market. So this is something that we can probably look into 
And uh, I hope I hope that other local brands will also um, take part because we have a lot of waste. So yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, sorry if I'm not following the question because this is just so interesting to unpack the answers of our panel. So hearing from Ms. Lagon and um, Mr. Kamiki, the business that they have been doing because the experience of having excess in the second hand and now they're upcycling it or repurposing it. Um, with, that, with that in mind, for this is a question for Mr. Abuque. Do you think this is a viable business model in the long run for the upcycling or repurposing if you are reliant um, with excess and waste? Because there might be a time that there may no longer have that kind of excess. So where are these upcycling businesses will get materials to upcycle? Uh, thank you for that. Um, before I answer the question, can I just pick up some things that I uh, got from Miss Anna and from Sir Barry, especially from the model of Sir Barry. Um, first, thing, first things first, I am also with Ma'am Anna regarding the localization of secondhand clothing. In fact, um, I see this not only in bio, but also in a lot of um, large scale companies or formal companies, if I may call it, that they have this so-called uh, corporate social responsibility that they employ in their uh, programs and regarding sustainability. In fact, this issue of secondhand clothing and waste is not far away from another topic that I am dealing on, in, which is on plastics naman, ano? but I will not talk about it here. <laughs> anyway, so regarding naman um, with uh, Sir Barry's discussion on segunda mana, um, in fact, I have... Personally, I have witnessed a uh, segunda man uh, sale, um, I think in 2018 in Trinoma, where I see that there is really a diversity of goods being on sale, not only on clothing, but also on non-moving inventories. No? Um, one thing that is notable about the segunda man model is, first things first, it employs um, locally produced goods. No, It does not anchor on imported goods. In fact, um, if I miss, uh, if that is the the main uh, distinction that I see um, today versus when I did my paper 20 years ago. Uh, much of the secondhand clothing that we see years ago or decades ago will be coming from imported um, secondhand clothing. But slowly and slowly, because of the innovativeness and the um, and the and the large scale of um of the second hand repurposing. In fact, we only see repurposing this time. We don't see repurposing twenty years ago. The challenge only is to get your your favorite uh, clothing materials from that dump of um cloth second hand clothing that you see. But now we do repurposing. We do at three hundred sixty turnaround. So that is the main difference of what we do now. So and. Local uh, clothing is being more and more introduced in secondhand clothing um, uh, stores. I, I see it here in um, in some part of Metro Manila and in Laguna, wherein you already see secondhand clothing that are not being imported. They are being collected elsewhere in, in households and some that. So I think that will be viable and uh, I think that the environmentally sustainable and it is being supported also by by ed our education system wherein I have mentioned a while ago that there are universities that are promoting this. But um, in terms of if, one, if we want some large scale sustainability of this uh, business, what I think is that there must be some collective effort. As Sir Barrios mentioned, um, in the case of repurposing and recycling, we are way, way um, lagging with our neighbors in the region, say for South Korea, that they have a repurposing uh, facility for clothing. In other countries, they have a repurposing facility for plastic waste and because they are interrelated. But in the Philippines, we don't have that. Parang kanya-kanya tayo, we do our own way. So that's... Uh, that's one advantage also of Baguio City. They have this so-called artisan city wherein uh, the, the, the artists and the locals have this collective effort of 
they are in one they are in unison and they are united in terms of their objectives and in particular in this case of second life building. So if we can do that, um, the government support for upcycling and there is this collective effort, each of the localities promoting it, I think that that will be a viable thing. And given that, that more and more locals are participating in secondhand clothing, not only that we are getting, in fact, I, I am not sure if we are still um, importing that much Kasi ang nakikita ko talaga, eh, even in the usual wet markets, even even in my case in in UP, um, one common um, um, fundraising activities of students is to sell their secondhand clothes. They just collect it from their uh, ordinates and just they sell it in the wet, mar uh, in the wet market during 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. And this, most of that are locally produced. They are not being imported. So I think uh, participation is um, one momentum for the sustainability, but we just have to to do our our efforts in unison and collective. That's all. Thank you. Oh, and for the two entrepreneurs who are doing upcycled businesses, do you think this is a viable business in the long run? Yes, it will be. It will be viable. We have just have to coordinate ourselves to to go to that uh, long term plan. We would be achieving so much. In fact, um, I see online resellers creating their own names because of their um, upcycling and repurposing that they are doing now in online. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a comment from Mr. Um, Kamike and Ms. Lagon on this? Um, in my case, uh, yes, um, there's still a lot. Uh, to be honest, uh, right now, our, our corporate partners is like numbering only to what, 150. That is so, that is way, way, way below if how many uh, boutiques and retail in the retail industry is operating. So we still have a lot of untapped possible partners. And to think that I'm not only the one doing this. There's another uh, uh, religious organization that is also doing this. Uh, I, I think they are. Taoist, uh, the, the Taoist or the, 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 Bud the Buddhist, I think, is also doing this, but on a separate uh, scale on how they wanted to, to dispose about their, their co uh, collected uh, secondhand or also for their own non-moving inventory. So uh, to be honest, year in, year out, we are talking of worth of 100 to 150 million of donations. Uh, I have seen that figures in 2017 until 2019. It just dipped uh, last year, except for that uh, giant mall operator of ours that uh, really has uh, a lot to to get to uh, to give to us. So, yeah, uh, the potential is still there. In fact, if 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 uh, pandemic did that happen, I could have already operated in Cebu. I could have. I already opened one in Iloilo. I'm supposed to to operate also in in the next uh, provinces in Panay, which is uh, Aklan and and Capiz. And then you have the Negros Occidental on the other side. That is what we are supposed to plan because uh, the our retail partners have also sub offices in in these regions, and uh, their their question to us is how can we give to you the non-moving inventories from this province? So now we are going to, to their areas so that they won't be shipping anymore this non-moving and just uh, give it to us as we open. We always open a, a sub-office every time that we have to open. Sub-office there because we could not bring in here in Metro Medellin, bring out again to going back to those provinces, that would be, I will die, I think, of the logistics concern with, with that. So, yeah. I may just add to that, no? Um, since we are a mainstream fashion brand with branches um, all over the Philippines, I think it will be good for us to really encourage the um, secondhand uh, market to thrive we can um, come up with you know, something like a program for our customers so that eventually if they want to let go of the things that they have, the clothes that they have, 
maybe there should be a space where they can put them either for donation, for reselling. So this is um, something that I will think about so that, you know, as part of our commitment to sustainability, we can have this um, platform as well for those who, who wants to, to have a part of it. I have no idea on how I will do it, but I'm sure um, most of you here would be uh, my resource persons so that I will learn about, you know, more about the secondhand market for as long as the purpose of which is to um, make sure that, you know, we do not waste a lot. And, uh, you know, in bio, we manage our inventory in such a way that we do not have enough sale items every time there is a promotion for, for malls. Um, we have to put together some stocks from our stores because we do not have enough for every store. And I think this should be encouraged as well so that there's, you know, there's not much of extra inventories going around. But for the secondhand market, I think there is really a good opportunity here for some people to also create um, a business out of it for pre-loved items. I, I've seen a lot of them online. Before this um, discussion, I've uh, tried to, to look for them because I really am not at all so familiar on how the business of secondhand uh, is going on. But I know there is a big opportunity for this. It's not for Baya anymore, but uh, we will just, you know, probably open that opportunity for others because we have our own business model. So, um, but this is something that should be responsibly done also by fashion producers like us. So uh, again, it's all about management of textile waste. And if I just mentioned as well for the plastics, no? um, since our esteemed panelists here mentioned uh, we are also having a, a project so that even the most small um, textile cutoffs will not be thrown. So it's something that um, I look forward to discuss with you separately. So yeah, um, this is right. a good opportunity also to, to connect with like-minded individuals. So right. yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just very time conscious now. We have a few minutes and we still have a lot of questions to answer. And now I think we need to tackle and discuss about the gentrification of secondhand. And this question is directed to um, Mr. Abuke and the um, and engineer Mapalo and Mr. Kamike, because what's happening now with the social media, especially with TikTok, the flip trip that has been happening last year, there is the demand of glamorizing secondhand, which becomes then a challenge for local traditional ukai ukai who doesn't have the capacity to compete with um, with the social media. What's your take on this of having the having the glamorized way of ukai ukai, and how is it affecting the local businesses of ukai ukai? Uh, in terms of uh, this glamorization, or if I may call it that way, of the secondhand clothing, um, even in the last decade prior to the pandemic, um, the economists have called this um, idea of the so-called democ democratization of retail and finance, wherein with the onset of technology, we are not anymore customized to to go to the mall to buy our clothes and do our economic activities. We can already do that at home using our fingertips. So the technology has already provided the roadmap for the, such democratization. And this pandemic only made it more essential for us to do our, um, our transactions online. Uh, this glamour, uh, the glamour of second hand is actually a, uh, a, is a combined cultural, social, and economic effects that has been um, working hand in hand in the last years. Wherein, as we have mentioned, schools are already entertaining the upcycling, the and 
uh, the, the artists are being tapped of their talents in, in showcasing it using secondhand clothing. And even environmentalists are being uh, tapped on how to, to really do the uh, stringent ways of uh, recycling clothing and other wastes. In fact, if you have noted, uh, if you have heard of the news, uh, uh, the celebratory news wherein one of the UP Diliman uh, professors had the chance to go to Emden Deep, the third deepest part of the ocean of the world. And to his surprise, he saw uh, um, jeans, uh, waste of clothing in that, uh, in that uh, part of the ocean. So that's how uh, the problem of uh, recycling is of, of the wastes that uh, humankind has been generating in the last decades. So, so I think um, this will continue the, the online thing uh, that we are doing. But the problem is it takes, it, it has a cost. We're in the idea of okay, okay, we're in you, you dig literally you dig the pile of clothes, it's not anymore available to social media because you're just tinkering on your screen and you just um, look at the, the, uh, the different pictures of the clothes that you are. And um, personally, this is my experience. I don't buy clothes online because I am not um, uh, good in looking at clothing. I, don't, I usually uh, look at clothes, but I usually buy the wrong size. So that's the why. So some of this... That's one uh, experience of people or in some people are not good in looking at pictures. They, they are usually buying the wrong sizes of clothing. But some, because they have so much money to spend, they just buy and buy. So they just accumulate and accumulate uh, um, clothing material. So that's one thing that I see in, in the next year. So that's all. Thank you. Engineer um, Apollo, do you think it uh, is uh, how are the local businesses of Ukay Ukay adapting to this glamorization of Ukay Ukay? Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, this is the only time that uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, notion of uh, glamorizing uh, Ukay because there is nothing like that here. I, I don't see it as something uh, uh, that is a threat. Uh, there's no gentrification of uh, uh, Ukay Ukay or um, second. Uh, Secondhand clothing here. As a matter of fact, uh, many of the market or uh, the uh, customers of Ukay Ukay are high, uh, culture and arts people, are high end people. You know, it's not because it's glamorous, but because it's uh, it's part of the adventure to uh, eventually find uh, a good buy uh, that is uh, of quality and uh, a unique um, a piece uh, which is can never be found anymore. Uh, that, that excitement of finding such is, is, I don't think, a glamorization. I don't think it's a gent But they, these are actually, uh, these are actually uh, a high-end market, uh, and uh, they can. Uh, we can see that they can afford to buy originals or uh, 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 new clothes. But uh, there's a different adventure in in finding uh, uh, good buy vintage clothes that are vintage. Uh, in terms of adaptation, I, I think uh, there's no competition because as a matter of fact, uh, it is just um, uh, adding more to the, so, to the uh, supply and demand chain. No? Uh, so what happens is that uh, there are those who are uh, more knowledgeable in online selling or, or the online market than the traditional uke uke stores. So they partner. Uh, they, they, they get a little commission from... Um, uh, from online selling, but actually the source is the same. No? So it's it's not uh, it doesn't mean that uh, there is uh, uh, another competition. It's it's just part of the cycle now. And many of uh, the uh, physical stores uh, are uh, partnering with uh, more uh, uh, entrepreneurs that are more adept with technology. So you know it's it's now a part of the ecolo ecology, the symbiotic relationships of uh, the supply chain. So uh, that that is how the the Ukay Ukal culture was cultivated here in uh, Baguio City. It, it it became part of, uh, as a matter of fact, Bayanihan. No, especially when uh, there are those that are not uh, saleable anymore, they are actually really being donated even outside of Baguio. When there are uh, calamities here or outside of Baguio, there. Um, 
many of uh, uh, some clothes that are useful for, for uh, victims are, are being sent as donations. Uh, so it, it's, um, uh, it, it, well, what I'm saying is it, it, it's a, diff, it's a diff, totally different uh, 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 business ecology uh, in terms of Ukay Ukay here in Baguio City. But I would just like to, uh, know if I may also comment on the, uh, some of the uh, uh, concepts that were brought out, particularly by uh, uh, Anna here, and, and thank you for visiting us, and uh, hopefully we could meet someday, uh, especially the concept of uh, uh, localizing the chain, or the supply chain, and uh, while, while uh, yeah, it, 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 it can make sense, no? and that uh, within the, our uh, uh, local, uh, supply chain, uh, th the same process can still be doable. Uh, but there are a lot of factors. Eh? Uh, what, like for example, uh, uh, what I mentioned about uh, the Ukay Ukay uh, business here has been really had a, uh, a solid structure from the 50s to the 60s. No? The, and, um, and, and, and they have already established markets. And, uh, and, and, uh, suddenly disturbing such structure will take a lot of effort really. But, uh, you know, we, we, we may be open and, and find uh, how can be a certain model that will localize uh, everything uh, uh, may, uh, may be more attractive. attractive you know? We can become attractive for our okay, okay entrepreneurs. And perhaps that can be extension of our discussion in the future, particularly if we start inviting our uh, okay, okay entrepreneurs, no, uh, because you know, as I've said, it's something that uh, is not being fully espoused because of lack of exposure, and they have already established uh, operation system and established market, which is what they're looking for: uh, a, a good buy, a nice find that is rare and that is seen here in in in, in the Philippines. You know? So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of prospects, and uh, hopefully, we can uh, discuss further with uh, more potentials for. Uh, but particularly in the in the efforts of uh, sus sustainability, you know, not only uh, in terms of waste, but also economic sustainability. Right. Oh, yeah, Mr. Byron, do you have comments about? Yeah, um, I think in the long run, uh, in in my in our personal uh, experience with this program, we were not really affected, despite the fact that the two biggest. Um, online selling platform have been operating for several years already. And uh, all these Instagram and uh, Facebook resellers are sprouting like mushrooms every now and then. We were not really affected. I think, our, um, I think I, as I mentioned a while ago, one of the basic reasons for us in our case is we, have, we, 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 were, we positioned ourselves in the market. A very clear message on who we are. Then I think also what plays a, a, a bigger role maybe is the Filipino culture itself. Mm -hmm. Unlike with the Caucasians, their family time would be beaches and parks. The Filipino time or the family time of Filipinos is mauling. That is why malls are already cities. Everything is there, banks, services, etc. You don't have to go somewhere else. So even during the pandemic, when we opened, the malls opened again in May 17, you basically see people lining up and that uh, trying to push the guards uh, for their rights to have their kids enter the malls. Uh, even during the, I mean, we've seen it during the bear months, during the Christmas season. We've seen it, but I think the only malls that were really affected are the ones during this pandemic are the really high end. It's because the rich people doesn't work, is really afraid to be infected by the virus. But for the common people, ah, there's no way who could, there's no such thing that could deprive us to be in a happy place. And for them, it's a mall. And as the name suggests, Ukay Ukay, the joy of just digging it I'm telling you, we have several malls and we're able to position these outlets in, the, in, in such a different manner that the other malls would require us that everything should be properly placed, displayed, among others. But there is also another market in the classy malls wherein 
you don't have to place everything on the uh, display modules. They want it in the boxes and okay, so just we just have to give in to their, uh, to their uh, qualms so that they, they will be buying anyway. So for, in, our, in my case, we're just thankful that we were not affected by this. But of course, uh, just like any entrepreneurs, we are open to the new idea. That is why we already launched our, our online selling platform. And we, next week, we'll be starting our own live selling. It is our first time to do this. So let us see if uh, it will work. At the end of the day, you just have to compensate everything in order for us to get the, the much needed funds for our program. Oh my God, so many great perspective on the second hand and we down to my last question. I'm trying to um, combine the questions that we have. So this is to all the panelists. Um, since we are talking about revolution, what do you think is the future of Ukai Ukai in the Philippines? Is it going to take over the local fashion or are we trying or the Ukai Ukai industry is trying to take over um, local fashion? And of course, because we are fashion revolution, we are about sustainability. Do you think Ukai Ukai is the solution to the, make the whole industry sustainable? Who wanna go first? Sure, I'll start na lang. The cap Ukai Ukai capital of the Philippines. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, when uh, I was, um, uh, still a student <laughs> uh, here in Baguio. That's one of our delights, no? Because you know how budgeted the uh, uh, being a student is, no? And uh, you have only meager means to buy new clothes at that time uh, during those times. So it is one of our adventures. Really, it's really our fun, uh, happy place, as mentioned by uh, uh, Barry here. And, uh, and, and it's something unique in Baguio City. So when it started to uh, uh, be known by uh, outsiders that it's when it became a, a tourist attraction and then the model has modified, uh, so to speak. Uh, but that's, I think, uh, when we start looking at it as uh, something revolutionary, uh, since uh, you mentioned about it. Uh, it. It's already existing. We might as well capitalize on how it can uh, uh, be of help no? economically to the locals and at the same time, uh, to be of something that perhaps a uh, part of the uh, adventure of tourists, uh, uh, thereby also helping them out in terms of finding a new experience in a place. Uh, and and uh, that this modification uh, is something that uh, I think where we need to uh, be more cautious of. Uh, and and uh, as, as, as mentioned earlier, there, are, there can be a lot of, uh, uh, possible models or uh, possible uh, uh, structures or uh, uh, system uh, no, in, uh, in, in terms of uh, where we want to be going to, uh, which is uh, sustainability. But definitely, uh, I would like to um, mention as well that uh, it's something that we're really very much advocating here in Baguio City. As I've said, they are now coexisting. No? When we talk of local brands, we are not really talking about you know, the, the boutiques. Uh, I, I know that there are a lot of local brands that are not even locally produced. So what we are really advocating are local textiles, local produced, locally woven. That, and, and I am happy that by what that is what Bayo is starting to advocate. Perhaps the, why, the reason why uh, uh, Anna already uh, visited us, I think more, more in the future. Uh, and, and that is what we're advocating. And then uh, having this uh, okay, okay, okay culture as well, secondhand clothing. Uh, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, fashion houses here in Baguio City that, that really do, uh, does a lot of, uh, or do a lot of uh, upcycling, repurposing. And, and uh, it's something that is uh, be, being uh, uh, watched by many others from outside of Baguio City. So I think uh, uh, that is something uh, revolutionary in terms of creativity and also economically. So we hope we can sustain that with the help of uh, uh, perhaps uh, some of our uh, uh, panelists here. And at the same time, our uh, mainstream brands, which, uh, is proud, are, which are proudly Filipino brands. Uh, and, and that kind of advocacy by Bayo is something that we would like to uh, support here in Baguio City.
May I speak next? Sure. Yeah, I want to respond right away to acknowledge and say thank you to um, Alec. No? Um, it is really the culture of the Filipinos to be uh, creative. And I've seen that in Baguio. I've seen, you know, everywhere I went there, there is always something so beautifully done. And I think if you just look at that, that inherent um, trait of the Filipinos, but specifically for Baguio, because being a creative city, it's not easy to, to have. You've been awarded by UNESCO for many reasons. So maybe we can take advantage of that and draw inspiration from it. Your creativity as a people can be a stepping stone to so many things. And the secondhand market is something that we can also um, look at as another venture, but this time for, I'm sorry, but I always push for localism, um, but I do understand economically that um, you have your, your years of um, revenues from them, but I, I'm just not very open to it because number one, it's not yet legal, uh, but if it's you know something that uh, can be worked on, then maybe I, you know, I can be, I don't know if I will be convinced because I used to import a lot of items. I used to have my factory in China. I went back for the reason of sustainability, the love of, you know, um, producing and giving jobs to the Filipinos. It may sound a bit dramatic, but it's true. We've been producing here because there is really economy, um, growth in terms of economy. If you've seen, but you know, I don't want to dwell with that because I, we have so many, so many panelists that needs to speak. But um, just, just because I'm pushing for localism is because I've seen the comparison from where we were before, who used to, you know, import a lot of items. And I was there, I was in, in, in that country for so long. And I've learned a lot. Whatever I've learned from them, I brought everything here. When you say, maganda ang gawang imported, I had to learn it. So I went there and found out how things were done. So after that, I, we all packed our things and came back here with all the knowledge and we are sharing it. And it's really different if you help the economy through livelihood you know, supporting a lot of jobs. And I looked at the, the market of this, um, the, the opportunities lost and job employments lost when we import things. Okay, maybe in the context of um, job creation, one, one, um, one set of items that we produce takes 18 steps, one eight, 18 steps to build a blouse to create a blouse. If I multiply that, I mean, doing math and everything, one container of secondhand items with 40,000 pieces in a 40 foot container, how many jobs will be lost? Yes, we talk of economic opportunities, but how about steady econ econ economic um, um, benefits for jobs, you know, stable jobs for, for sobers, for production people, we can translate that. And I think, you know, if you are a creative um, city, there's a lot of potential. All we have to do is take a look at the advantages of why we are doing this. And yes, secondhand um, is always good. It's part of sustainability. It's just the context of, you know, having it um, sourced locally because it creates more jobs here. It's more economically beneficial. So it, there's a, um, a longer topic on that, but essentially that's that's my that's my purpose really. That's my my point. It's really localism. Thank you. So I'll, I'll go next. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course. Um, we are all for localism here, and uh, the question is uh, if uh, if the, the regular 
uh, retail will be out, will outdo or the other way around okay okay or the other way around i think not outdo or outkill or whatever term you want to use but i think more of to compensate because there will always be excess and there will be excess production no matter how uh, uh what they call this, uh, you're able to compute everything properly. There will always be excesses. So we just have to compensate each other. So Miss Anna, if in case uh, you really have a lot on your plate, I'm, I'm, I'm always here. I'm always willing. But my, my heart is also um, goes to the, the point of Sir uh, Alec. Because of the industry in, in Baguio, uh, definitely sooner we will we will go to the hopefully we can convert Baguio. But my 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 only thought is that hopefully what will happen to Baguio will not what what will what happened to the jeepney drivers will not happen to Baguio. We're in the change was just so abrupt. Egypt, Egypt, electric jeep, etc., and like a lot will lost their job. So. Little by little, Sir Alec. Hopefully, we will go, we will go there. And don't worry, I might I might open a branch in Baguio. So <laughs> who knows? You might want it to be the model that it can happen and it can exist. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Okay, Buse. so uh, so being the last to speak of the four, uh, I hope I can summarize all the three. <laughs> points that the, the three discussions that I have raised. Uh, first things first, um, one thing that I understand, even in the whole the whole time that I made my paper and now is that Baguio will remain the hub of second hand building. That is non-questionable, even in early as 50s and 60s. It's just that people become more entrepreneurial and the Filipinos are more uh, uh, innovative in terms of recreating something. So that second-hand clothing came into place. So next thing is that uh, Ma'am Anna mentioned about um, localism. That's actually not actually bad. In fact, a lot of companies are promoting locally produced goods. In fact, that is one of the staple programs of the government early in memorial. Um, the Buy Filipino Thing movement, so on and so forth. We have this all of these things. But what I see is that there must be some collective effort in organizing all the little things that we do, and with, of course, with government support. In fact, um, with what I mentioned a while ago, because of more participation in, from the audience, from the locals, from the locals, the the ratio of local second hand is against the imported ones is starting to increase in years. So with the model of the segunda mana, wherein much of the goods that are being sold are locally sourced out for some advocacy reasons. And in fact, that's advoc that advocacy reason is one of the stepping stones of Segunda Mana to be successful. In fact, much of Filipinos are su supportive of that, as we see in the last years, even before the pandemic. Basta merong sakuna, nagtutulungan tayo eh. That's our culture. So in fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the things in being reconsidered in the amendment of RA 4650B. If there is some outfit that can prove that selling secondhand clothing can benefit some other activities like what Segunda Mana is doing, that's one of the reconsiderations being uh, considered in amending the law. So if we can do that, in uh, not only in Baguio City, but in the, to the rest of the Philippines, as what ma'am also mentioned, we can actually generate more jobs. In fact, a lot of SMEs or small and medium enterprises are starting to work on upcycling efforts, not only in clothing, but in other things that are being recyclable for the purpose of creating jobs and also soliciting more talent, more uh, insights about recreating things because that is one innate in our culture, to recreate, to redefine, to build more for ourselves. And in fact, that's that benefits us. Kaya nga nagiging sikat ang mga Pilipino internationally because of the ideas that we create from something that is being existing or from something that is being available. So there. So that's a long, long way, but we have to continue working on and uh, co uh, join to join our efforts and we will go there sure that we will go there but it will take some time maybe. thank you amazing beautifully said we have gone over the board of in terms of time um thank you so much for sharing your insights to all the panelists and i'm bringing in prince to do the closing 
Wow, what a fruitful discussion, everyone. I love how we had different perspectives from our panelists. Again, thank you so much, Professor Abweg, Sir Kamike, Ms. Lagon, Engineer Mapalo, and of course, Mr. Padit for moderating the discussion. Actually, we still have a lot of questions, but unfortunately, we ha only have a limited time for now. But nevertheless, we hope that the discourse will continue outside our fashion question time. And so for our clothing remarks, we have Tere Arigo, an entrepreneur, photographer, eco-enthusiast, software engineer, and one of the country coordinators of Fashion Revolution Philippines. She is a sustainable fashion advocate and the founder and creative director of T4L, a brand focused on reclaiming and repurposing clothing waste. She is a fan of DIYs and passionate about the advocacy of using fashion for good and for living sustainably. She is currently working as a project manager and helps teams build uh, and helps build teams for tech startups. Let's welcome Tere to the virtual stage. Thank you so much for that intro, Prince. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, to our panelists who have shared their time and insights in answering difficult questions about our topic. Um, to our moderator, Ray, for moderating today's panel discussion and joining us from Singapore. Um, to our audiences who shared their curiosity and questions. To the Fashion Revolution Philippines team for making this event possible. And for the Fashion Revolution Global team for your continued support. The acceptance of secondhand clothing in our country has always been part of our culture. But before, it was a form of necessity by those who can't afford to buy new clothes. Now, it has become a trend for fashion lovers and a source of empowerment and self-expression for Filipinos. This discussion about Upay Upay is really just the tip of the iceberg. As much as secondhand is now viewed as a more sustainable option than buying new, the massive amount of clothes that we see on Upay Upay stores is further proof of the broken fashion industry. This Fashion Revolution Week is about rights, relationships, and revolution, which gives focus on the interconnectedness of human rights and the rights of nature. Rights to help protect the rights of nature and the rights to live in a healthy environment for us and the future generation. Relationships to change fashion's narrative as we rethink the relationship we have with each other, with our clothes, within fashion supply chains, with nature, for our own prosperity and well-being, and for the health of our planet. Revolution, to never stop asking brands for transparency and hold them accountable for their entire supply chain. To engage policymakers and those in power, to encourage discourse that will pave the way for change. Some of the most severe and exploitative working conditions and worst environmental damage happens deep within fashion supply chains. We cannot continue to extract dwindling resources from an already not stressed out natural world, pollute our land and our oceans, fall far short of climate change targets, ignore inequality and human rights abuses in every part of the industry. The issues in the fashion industry never fall on any single person, brand, or company. Let's focus on using our voices to bring about change and transform the entire system. Now is the time for fashion revolution. Thank you. Thank you, Tere. And again, I'd like to resonate on that. Now is the time for fashion revolution. And thank you to everyone who tuned in. For further reading, you may go to our Fashion Revolution website and look for our policy paper on the impact of the importation of secondhand clothing in the Philippines. Moreover, kindly follow Fashion Revolution and Fashion Revolution Philippines on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can also join our Fashion Revolution Philippines community on Facebook. Again, I'm Prince Jim Del Ventura, the spokesperson of Fashion Revolution Philippines, and this has been Fashion Question Time, the Ukay Ukay Revolution. <laughs>